Hello, today we are going to be talking about my group's evolutionary biology article, which is titled The Naked Mole Rat, A New Long-Living Model for Human Aging Research. So this article has to do with aging and life history, and the activity I chose to present this article in kind of a unique format was bingo. So why bingo? Um, I think this article was kind of separated into two distinct sections, which was um, general information about naked mole rats, and then why naked mole rats make good models for human aging research. Um, so I split the questions accordingly, half on general information and then half on evolutionary theories and why they make good models. Um, as you may have noticed, I've chosen a bit of a Kim Possible theme for the bingo. Um, it was my favorite TV show growing up, and if you know anything about it, you know that Ron Stoppable down there in the bottom left corner has a pet naked mole rat named Rufus. Uh, there's a rap song about it. He's extremely cute. Really the true star of the show. So, um... I made a Rufus-themed bingo board, and hopefully uh, by the end of this little lesson, we will have a bingo board full of Rufuses. <laughs> so the first question I have, kind of an easy one, but which organism has a similar longevity quotient to that of humans? And of course the answer is naked mole rats. Um, this longevity quotient is one of the reasons why they would make good models for human aging research, because it is so similar to that of humans. What other species have commonly been used as models for aging research? Um, yeast, fruit flies, and nematodes have commonly been used for human aging research. And this is more so out of convenience than anything else. They don't have quite as many similarities to humans as other organisms do, such as naked mole rats. What is the evolutionary theory of aging? Uh, it says that aging is a non-adaptive result of the declining power of natural selection to favor advantageous alleles or to eliminate deleterious ones after sexual maturity. So basically it's saying that over time, um, or natural selection kind of loses its power, so um, it's no longer being as selective with um, how good um, our cells are. Um, and then also it's not great at eliminating the alleles that are bad for us, so they kind of build up over time. What is so unique about the relationship between the size and aging of Homo sapiens? Um, the size and aging one is kind of important. Uh, Homo sapiens have a very long maximum lifespan for our size. So this is kind of based off of body mass, so we would expect an elephant to live for a very long time, which they do, but humans live longer and we're much smaller. And then naked mole rats are kind of the same way. They also have a very long maximum life species lifespan, which makes them another good model for human research. What records is the class History Connecti known for holding, and I'm sure I butchered that, but basically the class that naked mole rats come from is known for holding the record for the largest living and longest living rodents. So the capybara is the largest living rodent and naked mole rats are the longest living rodent, um, and they're both in the same class. What type of social behavior is practiced by naked mole rats? Um, everybody's favorite, eusociality. So naked mole rats live in um, underground burrows and colonies. They have uh, breeders and non-breeders. And also, um, they're kind of similar to bees in that the females, um, there's normally one or two females that reproduce a lot of the offspring, but it's really interesting that even those that don't reproduce still retain that ability to reproduce throughout their entire life, and if you look at the board, you'll notice that's an answer to a question later, so uh, keep that in mind. What is the oxidative damage theory of aging? So this theory implies that characteristic features of aging are due to accrued damage caused by unchecked reactive oxygen species, or ROS, generated during aerobic metabolism. So this part of the article kind of goes into talking about um, antioxidants, and when I think of antioxidants, I think of blueberries. <laughs> so they say that we should, you know, eat a lot of antioxidants because it prevents this kind of damage, and thus not necessarily prevents aging, but can increase our longevity. What percentage of naked mole rat females in a colony actually retain breeding status? Um, and this was crazy to me how small this number actually was, but um, fewer than 0.1% of females actually 
attain breeding status. So as I said before, they still retain that ability, but very few of them actually use that breeding ability throughout their life. How many offspring can a fecund female reproduce? Uh, this number also really surprised me, and that's why it's on here. Uh, a female can produce greater than 900 offspring with average litters of 12. So a lot of children, and um, what makes naked mole rats so unique is that despite having children, their longevity does not decrease, which is kind of what's seen in um, other organisms, is that if they reproduce, their longevity decreases, but um, this isn't the case with naked mole rats. What is the advanced glycation end product theory? So this implies that physiological changes with age are due to tissue damage caused by the interaction of glucose and long-lived proteins. When you think about it in humans, um, tissue damage like liver spots and age spots that you kind of see on older people are signs of aging that are also forms of tissue damage. What makes naked mole rats unique compared to other mammals? Um, as we've kind of talked about, naked mole rats have a lot of unique characteristics, but um, some of the ones uh, that make them unique compared to other mammals are that they do not exhibit age-related changes in metabolism or body composition. So as we... Um, as naked mole rats age, they don't have changes in these things. Their skin gets parchment-like, um, and we as humans also kind of lose muscle definition. Our skin loses its elasticity, and our metabolism slows way down. But what makes naked mole rats special is that they actually don't do that. What makes non-breeding naked mole rats different from other non-breeding organisms? So again, this is a big one we've talked about a lot, is that they retain their ability to breed throughout their life, even if they aren't breeding. So even though they aren't having kids, they still have the ability to, which is pretty cool. What is environmentally selected lifespan theory? Environmentally selected lifespan theory says that animals that live where resource availability is unpredictable will exhibit extended longevity, which is kind of, which is very interesting um, and really not what you would expect. But when I think of that, I kind of think of like a cactus and how when you're in the desert, you don't really know when your next available source of water is um, going to be accessible to you. There's not really access to water, but cacti still live for a really long time. Uh, what traits parallel use sociality and are common in both humans and naked mole rats? So this is a really important question because it's another reason why they make such good models for human aging research. And it's uh, the extended care of young, intergenerational transfer of information, and division of labor are present in both humans and naked mole rats. Um, I can tell you I don't think my parents are loving the extended care of young right now with the quarantine and not being able to live on campus. Um, intergenerational transfer of information, and then the division of labor um, we also have in human society. In naked mole rats, um, there's obviously breeders and non-breeders. Um, in bees, there's workers and there's a queen. Um, in humans, obviously, we don't do all the jobs. You know, we don't, um, we aren't fast food workers and doctors and mechanics and, um, you know, everything else. We all have our jobs to do and it helps our society function better. Uh, what is the rate of living theory of aging? Uh, this theory uh, focuses on a constant lifetime energy expenditure and ascribes species differences in longevity to differential rates of energy expenditure. So it's saying that um, longevity is based on how much energy you expend and when you expend that energy. So uh, it kind of makes sense when we're younger, we have a lot more energy than when we're older. Um, it's not as though we have a constant rate of energy throughout our life. So that one also kind of kind of makes a little bit of sense, kind of relatable. Final question, um, which two processes at lower rates may extend longevity? So uh, the answer to this is resting metabolic rates and reactive oxygen species. So RMR and ROS, um, as we talked about previously, the reactive oxygen species, if this is prevalent in lower quantities at lower levels, uh, that kind of prevents aging, like we talked about uh, the blueberries. Um, that's why they encourage you to eat your antioxidants because it can extend your longevity if we reduce that damage. And then resting metabolic rates, I like to think about bears and how um, bears are able to survive the winter without eating because they hibernate and their metabolism slows down. So people, not necessarily people, but 
organisms that have resting metabolic rates may have extended longevity. So this was one of the things that was more of a maybe. Um, the reactive oxygen species, like they said that that was um, more so proven and that the resting metabolic rates needed for the research, but both things that may extend longevity. Final thoughts. Um, I thought this article was very interesting. Um, it was fun kind of getting to um, go back through some Kim Possible stuff and bring back childhood memories. But um, overall, I think the article did a really good job of demonstrating just how fascinating naked mole rats really are and also proving why naked mole rats make such good models for human aging research.